One of the core tenets of my group is this idea of constraint-driven innovation. And the problems that I'm trying to solve have by and large been solved in, in wealthier markets, right? But what we're trying to do is bring a similar level of performance as we have in the U.S. to these poorer markets and, and try to achieve that performance at maybe one-tenth or one one-hundredth the price, right? And if you can provide that much value, you know, high performance at low cost, that creates an impact in a poorer market, but everybody globally likes, you know, high performance at low cost. So what we try to do in our projects is understand those constraints of the developing or emerging market, understand that performance and price we have to achieve, and then look globally and say, if we have that performance and price, can we disrupt global markets and how will our technology fit into these existing markets in wealthier countries? So really, we strive for global solutions. We strive for that impact at the bottom of the pyramid, but because we're providing top of the pyramid performance at the bottom, we try to disrupt all global markets around that technology. When, when we're looking for a solution, uh, no technology is off the table. You know, we really try to look at anything available to us and see what will fit within the context of where we have to apply a solution. So if we're talking about a, like a prosthetic foot, our high-end prosthetic feet in the U.S. Are, are made of carbon fiber. We might be able to make a carbon fiber prosthetic foot in India. You know, it, it all depends on the price and, and the fatigue performance of that material, or we may have to use something like Delrin or, or spring steel, you know, that's a little lower cost. So I am, you know, what I can't stand is when people think developing world low cost, they think low quality, crappy stuff that we would never want in the West. That's not true. Just look at cell phones, right? That's the canonical example. Like the, the cell phones that people use in a developing country are basically the same as what we use here. You know, maybe there's a little differentiation in price, but the, the same like infrastructure it uses, exactly, you know, what we have here. So it, it depends on the context and what will fit within the constraints and requirements of the problem. So in each project in my research group, right from the get-go, we try to understand the entire chain of stakeholders that are going to take a technology from inception of the original idea all the way out to implementation in the real world. Because each one of those stakeholders along that chain, be they manufacturers, distributors, funders providing subsidy, and then the end user, they each assert constraints and requirements on the design. So if we capture those early on in the design process, I think that sets us on a better trajectory to get it commercialized in the end. And by and large in my group, we work with companies because companies have an inherent motivation to make products sustainable and scalable because it's in their best interest. They sell more products, they make more profit, right? And if you look at the impact of industry in developing and emerging markets, you know, you look at things like the Honda Super Cub motorcycle or you know, like Coca-Cola, you know, their level, their, their scale of distribution far exceeds any NGO, right? But t I also don't, you know, not work with NGOs. I think there's a lot of NGOs that make a lot of sense to work with depending on the context. So our prosthetics organization that we work with is the largest in the world. They do 23,000 prosthetic legs a year, right? So they are the best player on earth to partner with when you're talking about prosthetic limbs for developing countries, and that's why we partner with them. Because they know scale, they know manufacturing, they know how to get funding for this type of work. But if we're talking about something like irrigation, we also work with the biggest irrigation company in the world, because they're a billion dollar a year revenue business, and 95% of their customers in India are small scale farmers, and they get stuff out to the field and can make a huge impact very quickly. And they can also manufacture and distribute at scale like nobody else. So I think it, it depends on who the big player is who is best positioned to get a product to market. That's who we try to partner with.